How important are names in fiction? This is a question and a topic that you see people talking about um, a lot on the internet. You see people talking about it on Twitter and on YouTube. Um, the extent to which names, the name of a character, matters in a story. People have different opinions on this. On one end of the spectrum, um, for, for some people, some people really don't care what their characters are named. Um, when they have to name a character, when they have to come up with a name, they'll just think of just a name that they like, that they think is possibly suitable, and then, yep, that's it, that's fine for that character. Um, they don't necessarily do much research into it, they just choose a name that they like, a name that they know, um, and then that's that's the name of their character, and that's it, that's the extent of um, the decision process for that character's name. Um, that's one end of the spectrum, and then there are people at the other end of the spectrum who, when it comes to naming a character, this is a very intense decision process. There will be this long, involved research process where they might look up the original meaning of that name. A lot of names originally had a more literal meaning. Um, or if they're coming up with a name to be part of an invented language, they might, um, they might do a similar process where they, they sort of think, oh, let's, um, let's use some word forming elements from an older form of this language that I'm putting the name into and then um, modernize those word forming elements in the same way that all of the words in that invented language have been, um, which can be quite a lengthy and involved process, but they might choose to follow that, you know, the same process that names follow in real life of this evolution over time, um, from a, a more literal meaning to just a more abstract name um, for their invented language. Or they might just choose a word that sounds like it belongs to that invented language. It, it, it seems to fit aesthetically and phonetically with that language, with the, the patterns of that language, and then, and then that'll be suitable for that character. Those, that's what the people at the other end of the spectrum do. And I am very much someone at that end of the spectrum. Um, for me, character names are tremendously important and a lot of thought goes into what a character is going to be called. And maybe even if I come up with a name at some point um, and I use that name for a while, so at some point later I might think, oh, it's, it's actually not quite right. I'm going to try and come up with something else. And then I spend a long time trying to come up with a new name. So for me, I spend a lot of time coming up with character names and character names are very important to the story. And I actually think that this is something that all authors should consider when writing or indeed planning their stories, because you can add a lot of meaning to a story or to a character through their name. By carefully choosing a character name, you can add a lot of meaning to that character or to the story overall. And there are different ways of doing this, depending on what kind of um, book you're writing, depending on what kind of world. I mean, if it's if it's fantasy and science fiction, there's there's more options for this, depending on what kind of story, what genre you're writing. There are different options for this. One way of adding meaning to a character, and I suppose I suppose this is possibly the, the main way of doing it, but one way of doing it is that most names, possibly possibly all names, I suppose all names, well, I, almost all, let's say almost all names um, that exist in, not, I mean, in modern English, but really all languages, um, almost all names, very nearly almost all names, um, while nowadays we think of them as abstract things, right? We think of them, oh, that word, that word is just a name. That's all it is. It's just a name. It's just a, a way of referring to someone. Most names originally had a more literal meaning. For example, one name that comes from Old English is the name Edward. Now, in modern English, we don't think of the name Edward as having any uh, greater meaning to it. It's just an abstract name. It's just the name Edward that could just refer to a person. That, that's it. That's all the meaning there is to it. But um, it comes from, well, it's made of two Old English name forming elements. The first one being Ed, um, which means uh, wealth or fortune, and then Ward or Ward, which means guard. So the name overall means 
wealth god or wealthy god or rich god, something like that. A lot of names have this, a lot of names have this original, more literal definition. And using that is a way of adding meaning to a character. Because obviously most people, when they're just reading a book, just see the name and just think of it as that abstract name. But because it has this original, more literal meaning, you can use the meanings of uh, these names. If you choose a name for a character that has a certain meaning, you can, you're sort of hinting um, something about that character. Perhaps um, you're hinting something about the character's true intentions. Um, if perhaps the sorts of things that the character normally says don't reveal their true intentions, you can use their name in order to subtly reveal what the, that character's true intentions or true motivations are. Um, so you can use them uh, as hints in some ways. Or um, another, so I, certainly something else that I do in my writing, another way of using names is just choosing names that are particularly fitting for a character. So if a, if a character is, if, you know, if the reader can tell exactly what a character's like, um, they're, not, uh, they're not trying to sort of obscure their motivations or anything. Um, if, the, if the reader can just tell what the character's like, you can just give the character a name that is particularly fitting. Um, so a name that perfectly describes uh, wh who that character is. This is something... So I, I put a lot of effort, even into naming minor characters and side characters um, in my stories. And in On the Subject of Trolls, in the first story, the king in the first story is called King Ethelred. Um, now, Ethelred is a, another Old English name, and it has two word-forming elements, um, Ethel and Red. And Ethel is just an Old English word meaning noble. Um, and you see, it, you see that same word appear in non-name words as well, with the same meaning. And then uh, Red, which means, or Red or Rad, depending on at what point you're taking the pronunciation from, um, which just means counsel or advice. So the name Ethelred just means noble counsel or noble advice. And what do you know? King Ethelred in the story is this very um, sort of calm, patient, rational person. Um, he is someone who provides noble counsel. So in, in that regard, it's just a name that just accurately describes that person, that character in the story. So this is one way of adding meaning to a character. Um, through their name in a, in a story. Another way of adding meaning to a character um, through the character's name is using a purely aesthetic or phonetic method. Um, and this is something that I did in Zolantis, where uh, the, the languages that we um, see in the book are completely invented. Um, and also something that I did in on the subject of trolls with the trolls' names, because the trolls' names, most of the characters in on the subject of trolls, um, all of the all of the side characters and all of the non-troll characters um, have old English names that that uses this etymological approach, where you look at the meaning of the name um, and uh, and you choose a, a name that fits or that, or that gives a hint. Um, but the trolls themselves, uh, I didn't use this approach for their names. For the trolls, all of their names are completely made up um, and invented there. They use some Old English spellings uh, and some features of Old English spellings, but they are all completely made up. They're not made of word-forming elements. Um, and that's, that, was, that was a decision that I, that was something I knew I wanted very early on. Um, I think... I mean, most of the time, I think maybe, I think early on in the planning process for that book, I, uh, I knew the sorts of names that I wanted the trolls to have. And their names are based purely on aesthetic and phonetic considerations. The trolls are, all of the trolls have what I would say are very ugly names. Um, their names, all of the vowels are sort of uh and uh sort of vowel sounds. They're just very ugly, unpleasant vowel sounds. Um, and they, a lot of the names have just far too many consonants in them. A, a name like Hlufk is just far too many consonants and it just, just sort of mangles and garbles the whole word. 
Um, I wanted the trails to have very ugly names. So this is a purely aesthetic and phonetic consideration, right? They're, the names, the written forms look ugly and also they sound ugly when you speak them. Um, so this is another way of adding meaning to the characters. In this case, in that case, the meaning is that the, the trolls, so the trolls primarily are morally ugly characters. Uh, and this is reflected in other attributes that they have. So they are morally ugly, but they are also physically ugly to reflect that. And also their name is an ugly name to reflect that. And they have these very guttural, strained, ugly voices as well. So in on the subject of trolls, when it came to naming the trolls, the method that I used to add meaning to the, the names of the trolls was by thinking about the aesthetics of the name and the phonetics of the name. So how the name looks when it's written down. Does it look ugly when it's written down? Does it sound ugly when you say it? So that's another method of adding meaning to um, a character through their name. And the reason ultimately why I think it is important to add meaning to a character through their name and why it's important to add meaning to the story through the character names is that I generally think that everything in a book, everything in a story should have a purpose. There should be a reason why it's there. Um, you know, why, why did you include that as opposed to not including it? Because you, you could have just left it out. And this is a, a consideration that particularly comes up in editing. When I'm editing a story, um, I look through it and I, I look at parts of it. I might look at a, a word or a sentence or a paragraph or even a whole section and think, what, what does that add? What does that do? What's the purpose of that being there at all? And if there isn't any purpose to it being there, I tend to take it out. Um, I, I generally think that in stories, um, particularly, I mean, this is, this is something that I think it's easier to think about when you self-publish your books. Because when you self-publish your books, you can put anything you like in them. I know, you, you can put, you could make, make um, you could publish a book that has absolutely nothing in it at all, no words whatsoever. Or you can publish a book that has, it's 400 pages long and it has nothing on um, almost every page apart from one where it just has this, a single letter on it. You could do that if you want. If you thought there was artistic value in doing that, you could do that. Um, so when it comes to self-publishing your books and when, when you can just do anything that you want, um, you really have to, it, well, it's a lot easier to think about why am I doing this at all? Why am I putting that there? Uh, do I want to put that there? Maybe I don't want anything on, on that in that section. Maybe I want to take that bit out. Maybe I want to put something else there. When you have complete creative control over something, this idea of, of why do I want it there? Uh, what's the reason for me putting it there? Um, it's a lot easier to think in these terms. And so when it, when it comes to editing a story or, or a book, I am often thinking about why is that there or why is that that way? Why did I name a character this rather than that? These are the sorts of things that I think about when I'm editing a story and, and when I'm writing it. Essentially, why am I doing this? Why am I doing any of this? Why, why is this this way in the story? Um, I generally think that Every word, every sentence, every word, every letter, every, every, every single thing that is printed on the page in a book, there should be a point to it. There should be a reason for it. There should be a purpose for it. Um, and you, the author, should know what that is. You should, you should decide why it's going, what's going where in the book and why it's going there, including character names. This is why I think that character names are something that all authors should consider when writing or planning their stories. I think, to a certain extent, everything that can carry meaning should carry meaning. That's what I think about character names in fiction. If you yourself are an author, let me know what you think on this topic down in the comments below. This video was a more sort of writing-y style video. I make videos on various topics on this channel sometimes about um, more sort of general abstract writing things, sometimes about my own books, sometimes about um, other science fiction and fantasy films and television shows. I never know which things people like the most. So if you liked this video, um, also let me know down in the comments below so that I can then make more videos that are like this one.